So that's a quick bit of news here, people. Most of you will probably have heard this by now anyway, but Dave Allen will fight a rematch with Lenroy Thomas on the Anthony Joshua Kubrat Pulev undercard on Saturday, the 28th of October at the Principality Stadium in Cardiff, Wales, United Kingdom. It will be shown live on Sky Sports box office. Allen lost the first fight via split decision. I think that was on the... Was that on the Kell Brook? Errol Spence on the card, I think it was, correct me if I'm wrong there, but yeah, he lost a split decision, he was heavily criticised by Eddie Hearn and many other people for not letting his hands go in that fight, Dave Allen is still a relative novice, and one of the things that can happen, anyone who's been involved, for example, in amateur boxing will know that you do get some guys, or some kids, who when they first get in the ring to box, for whatever reason, there's just some type of mental block where they can't let their hands go. They just don't feel relaxed. It's on a subconscious level. They just don't feel relaxed enough to let their hands go. There's just some mental barrier blocking them. And that's what it appeared to be to me when Dave Allen fought uh, Lemroy Thomas because it was the same in the Dylan White fight. He was just standing there with no offense, not letting anything go. And Dylan White was teeing off in him all night. You know, so this is a running theme with Dave Allen. Is he he struggles to get offense off uh, a lot of the time. When he's fighting lower level opposition, when there's not so much pressure on him maybe, he lets his hands go a little bit more. But, you know, whenever he's actually in a a real fight, he struggles to let his hands go. And I don't think it's just a technical issue. I do believe it's a subconscious mental issue that a lot of fighters, a lot of inexperienced fighters do have. And it takes a while before they start letting their hands go. <laughs> you know, again, if you are someone that's dealt with amateur boxers, for example, you might know what I'm talking about. Anyway, uh, a lot of people believe that he could have won the Lemroy Thomas fight if he just let his hands go a little bit more. That beating a Thomas is well within his reach. So we'll see. The interesting little caveat here is that Joe Joyce, I mean, the word on the grapevine on the rumor mill is that Joe Joyce is targeting a fight with Lemroy Thomas in his second fight if he gets past Ian Lewis in his pro debut. Well, if Dave Allen is able to beat Lemroy Thomas, then you could potentially get Dave Allen versus Joe Joyce in Joyce's second fight. You know, because Joyce wanted to fight Dave Allen in his first fight, you might get it in the second fight for the Commonwealth title. It's, it seems anyway, according to the rumor mill, that Joyce is going for the Commonwealth title in his second fight, regardless of who it's against. Is it If it's Lemuray Thomas or if it's Dave Allen, he's going to go for it. Whether either one of those guys will actually fight Joe Joyce remains to be seen. Dave Allen apparently is not too keen on it, not that Dave Allen is afraid of Joe Joyce, I'm 100% sure he's not, but he's thinking about his own career at this point. He doesn't want to be the guy that they just put in there as an opponent every time. He wants to be built up himself as a, you know, as a commodity, as a viable fighter in his own right, not just an opponent for people. So that's why he turned the uh, Joe Joyce fight down. And... Will he still take the same position if he beats Lemuro Thomas in the rematch? And then Joe Joyce, you know, Haymaker Ringstar come to him and say, okay, Joe Joyce wants to fight you for the Commonwealth belt. Do you want to, you know, do you want to fight or not? I guess a lot of it might depend on how Joe Joyce looks against Ian Lewison as to whether or Dave Allen will want to take it. And I guess as well, how much money they offer him. So anyway, let me know how you feel about this in the comment section below. It's Hatman and Mark.